Hello, I'm Jamie Ellis from the University of Florida's Honeybee Research and Extension Lab. In this episode of a video field guide to beekeeping, we'll be discussing Varroa mites, the number one killer of honeybees on the planet. Varroa mites are ectoparasites of honeybees, which simply means that they live on the outside of a honeybee. Varroa mites are actually quite small to the naked eye, but compared to their host, they're one of the largest parasites on the planet. It would be like you or I carrying a basketball-sized tick on our body. Varroa mites are not natural pests of Apis mellifera, which is the honeybee that we keep here in the United States. Rather, they're a natural parasite on Apis serrana, an Asian species of honeybee. In 1987, Varroa mites were discovered in the United States, and since that time, they've spread all over the United States. In fact, Varroa mites are not only found in the U.S., but they're found in most countries around the world. They remain the number one killer of honeybees globally. The behavior and biology of Varroa mites is actually well understood. Varroa mite females are the only ones that you will find outside of brood cells and you'll find them actually attached to adult honeybees. Varroa mites actually feed on the hemolymph of the blood of the bee. Now bees are made up of many hard plates or segments on their body. Varroa mites can't penetrate these plates to actually get to the bee hemolymph. Rather they have to go to the creases or the crevices where these plates meet. They'll insert their mouth parts into this soft tissue and suck bee hemolymph. Once varroa mites are ready to reproduce, they will crawl off of adult bees and go into brood cells. Now the age of the brood cell that they are targeting happens to be larvae that are just about to be kept. When larvae are ready to be kept, they produce a pheromone that tells the worker bees in the colony to cap over the cell with a waxy capping. Varroa mites can cue into that and then they can go into the brood cells prior to the cells being capped. When varroa mite females do this, they crawl to the very bottom of the brood cell where the royal jelly is. They'll crawl into the royal jelly and they have a special apparatus on their body that they stick out of that royal jelly that permits them to breathe while they're hiding under the bee larva. Once the larva is covered over with that waxy capping, the varroa mite comes out of the brood cell, out of the royal jelly, attaches itself to the larva and begins feeding. At this point, she will oviposit and the first egg that she lays is actually a male varroa mite. Subsequent eggs are females. So varroa mites, it's perfectly normal for brothers and sisters to mate inside the cell. Varroa mite males never leave the cell. Varroa mites are mites so they don't go through egg larva pupa adults like most insects do, rather they have nymph and deutonymph stages. So as they're maturing in the cell, they're actually white until they get to their later developmental stages when they begin to harden. Male varroa mites are always white. They never get to the stage where they harden. Once the bee is born or choose its way out of that cell, it will come out with any mature varroa mite female offspring. As she comes out of that cell and she comes into contact with other bees, the varroa mites might jump from bee to bee and continue feeding or go into another cell to reproduce. What's important to note is that if enough varroa mite foundresses or females who go into the brood cells at the beginning go in there, then you can actually have larva death or pupal death. The bees will never be born in the first place. Another problem with varroa mites is when the mites are in the cells, they can actually give our developing bees various viruses. One virus in particular, deformed winged virus, causes the bee's wings to be deformed. So as the bee is born and chews out of its cell and emerges, you'll notice one of the symptoms of varroa mites is you'll have deformed wings in bee colonies. And this is caused strictly by the deformed wing virus that the varroa mite transmitted to the adult bee. Varroa populations explode quickly in spring and summer. In fact, they very closely mimic natural honeybee population growth. Varroa populations are very low in fall and winter, 
and as bee populations grow in spring, varroa populations closely follow. Bee populations naturally decline toward the end of summer, but varroa populations are peaking at that point. Consequently, that tends to be the time of year when varroa problems are at their worst. Bee populations are shrinking, varroa populations are growing, and you have a perfect storm of varroa mites take over the colony.